Hello. Hello. Welcome, Eti Doza. Thanks for being here. Uh, my name is Matt Reschenberg. I'm uh, the project manager of the OpenQM project, uh, data center management framework and cloud computing uh, infrastructure. And I'm also the CEO of the OpenQM Enterprise Company. And today I would like to talk with you a bit about cloud, 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 cloud. Cloud! Woo, woo, woo! I think you, you may, you may, thanks. I think you, you heard the word already so, so many times that uh, you may, you may not, you, you may cannot stand it anymore. Yeah? So I will, I will not explain what's cloud to, today. I will not talk really specific about cloud, but my goal is to go with you into automation. It's not a hype word like cloud, but automation is very serious. To go a step further forward into the direction of like a private cloud infrastructure for infrastructure as a service, for example. So <clears throat> the talk is called How Much Automation Do You Need? And the question I'm putting new now on you uh, is first, who knows the OpenQRM project? The OpenQRM project? Okay, this is some. Who of you are system administrators? Okay, several. Um, who of you are, is dealing with system monitoring? Like Nagios, Abix, Collect, DO stuff. So there are several. Okay. Who of you are dealing with high availability? How serious for you? High availability? Ah, also, people. Okay, good. good. Um, people here who are taking care of network address assignment, like DNS, IP management, stuff like that. You, you cannot hear me anymore? I have to put the microphone nearer to my mouth, I guess. Cool, I will do this, okay. So, who's doing the IP assignment in your company? Great. So, somebody's doing, um, in your company, are you doing backup and restore? Great. So, there, there are companies which are not doing backup and restore. So I'm not telling. I'm, I'm not saying they are wrong. Uh, they may have special reasons for it. Normally, if you don't care about backup and resource, you're doing something wrong. Okay. So I ask several questions already, and you see, uh, when we talk about automation for IT services, it's not like, uh, can you quickly bring up a virtual machine for me? That's never enough. And the thing is, there are much more things around. Uh, IT services, like we are be building and administrating, then uh, just bring up a new server or switch on a virtual machine. So this we skip. Uh, you know me already now. Uh, I already also told you what, what's going on in this presentation. I would like to make your life easier at all. And so we have to find what is your pain. The pain of the administrators. So at all we we all have lots of work, and if too many people are coming to us and tell us, uh, can you quickly bring us a virtual machine? This does not make our, our that, that does not make less work for us. Because actually those machines are uh, switched on as a workaround and uh, living like forever in production space. Something we need to maintain. Everything what you switched on, every virtual machine you create, you need to maintain. Keep, keep care of that. Uh, I forgot one thing to ask. One thing to ask. You heard about IT documentation, right? So you, there are several rules also in Germany. We, we love rules in Germany. So uh, there are rules what you need to document for your IT. So I'm, just keep it in mind. I will bring up the same question later on. In a maybe eventually different, different purpose. So, I ask around, we have people here for which, are doing, which are doing IP, monitoring, backup, configuration management, monitor, whatever, high availability and so on. We want to care about automating that all. That means we, will, we don't want to replace you, your person, your people caring about monitoring or specific parts of your data center or of your services. But we, from the OpenQM project, our goal we have actually two goals. The first goal is we want to give you superman power so that you can do more work, more efficient work in less time, so you have time to care about the real 
the real important things. The second goal is world domination. What else? So, uh, for an open source project, it's, it's a natural thing that you want to have world domination. <laughs> okay, what's next? Uh, yeah, actually, the work will even be more easier for you if you can put responsibility to your own users. If the user is not coming to you and tell you, hey, can you create a virtual machine for me? But he has the capability to do it himself. He won't bother you anymore. So one thing about that is, uh, one, one main thing about, uh, when you think about self-services for user, like infrastructure as a service, uh, also known as private cloud, is give also the people to deprovision their service again. The virtual machine you created for user X, Y, Z, it will never be deprovisioned. It will be uh, in backup uh, for the next 10 years or so. But if you give the users the capability to self-deprovision their services, they will free up resources in your data center. They just need to understand they need to, they, that they are paying what they're using, not what they're ordered. So this is one thing also uh, we'll talk about in this presentation. I have to speed up a bit, sorry. And I will give a whole part of, the, of this talk, I want to give a presentation. Actually, OpenQRM is scalable up to, we haven't, we haven't found a limit actually because you can scale uh, with uh, islands of OpenQRM with the cloud zones. Uh, uh, OpenQRM is, is so lightweight that it also runs on your or my notebook. I have a complete installation of OpenQRM uh, with several uh, features enabled on my notebook. So this I want to show you how easy things can be. Yeah. Okay, we start. We all know the technical pain. So I'm, 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 I am i won't go over this part too too much. You know your daily work. You know where, uh, where it hurts. And we have to deal with complex systems. So there will be also, there will be also like decisions to, to, to be made and configuration to be made for, for us. So that means the whole systems we are maintaining it, they're, they are not getting less complex, but they are getting more complex. Lots of systems. So the virtualization, great thing. We had uh, like a big boost of virtualization in the past 10 years. Great. It made a lot of things a lot of easier. We are more independent from hardware. But every virtual machine runs on hardware underneath. There's no virtual machine without a host. And we have like... Uh, five to ten times more operating systems to manage now. IP addresses, backup, monitoring, all the tasks we I just talked about before, they are still there and they need to be done in a similar way as for physical systems. But with a much higher number because creating a virtual machine is much easier than ordering a server. So, uh, unstandardized hardware software stacks. We heard a lot of uh, from a lot of bigger companies that uh, users are on creating a kind of shadow IT so if if ordering a new server takes two months for a project in a bigger company that's far far too long so the users are actually going to buy their service either in a pub in a public cloud or they order the service from a different provider and put it underneath the desks something horrible for you as IT administrator if there is some shadow IT building up underneath the user's desks. There's something you don't want. Also something which you can avoid if you give more responsibility to the users and let them do people, let people do things by themselves. Choosing the right tool. Hardware failure. I have, uh, um, there's, there's a sentence like Murphy's, it's kind of Murphy's law. There's only one thing in the universe which won't change. Uh, the thing is that everything is constantly changing. So if you think about your server, so if your server is running, if you, have set, if you have set it up, you have configured it correctly, and now it's changing, that normally means it breaks. It goes from a status where it works to a status where it doesn't work. So expect your hardware to fail. A good example, um, there's a, a project called Code Monkeys from Code Chaos Monkey or something. It's uh, um, from Netflix. Uh, they're building software, and they have made uh, their own little demon, which turns off production servers randomly. So they have built their software so that it is aware of failures. 
keep that in mind because failures will happen all the day. So, <clears throat> excuse me, the, <clears throat> one of the biggest things we heard, which we need to fight when we want to automate, is politics. I'm sure if you, the bigger the company is you're working in, the more you will feel the politics and rules, which actually will tell you it's not a good idea to automate. So, there are, there are always good reasons to automate, because if, they have, if you have repeating tasks, a uh, human tends to error. So, to avoid this, automate it. And document it so uh, it's reproducible. Um, the political pain <clears throat> I would like to talk about a bit more is, <clears throat> I ask who is doing what in this room? So, in bigger companies, uh, for every part of, of every subsystem of the data center, like backup, like monitoring, uh, like IP management and so on, there's a different department doing the stuff. So that's why it also takes so long to order a server, because your request to order a new server needs to go through every apartment. It needs to be ordered, it needs to be stand up, physically set up, connected to network and so on. Every, every step will be done by different people. So if you want to automate, you have to think about the whole stream you would like to automate, because if there's just one thing missing which needs, which cannot, or which political, by political decision, should not be automated, you can forget the whole stream, because it's not 100% automation anymore. So imagine, the worst case, if you have a private cloud, and users can request systems on their own, it's beautiful, people like it very much, but if there's just a single step where some people of one department or, or more departments need to like edit an Excel sheet for documentation or to, to send out an IP address to somebody. If there's one step behind it, don't call it cloud. It's just IT services like we are doing last 10 years or 20 years. That's not automation. And you will see if you want to automate. The bigger the companies are, the, the more rules you will have, and the, the harder it will be to uh, make them understand that automation is actually a good thing. Okay. <clears throat> so, we are dealing with long established complexity, and it gets even worse. Is there, there are also like rules which are just there, long term rules which you just say because things. We did things the last 10 years like that, so we won't change. How stupid is that? Okay, so I will go a bit more into, into the pains now. So we have uh, one pain is, uh, if you have set up a server, you need to, config, you need to configure it uh, actually to uh, uh, have the application installed, the right the DNS resolving, uh, the, the, the application may need to be configured automatically. This is normally manual work. Who's using Puppet, Chef, Ansible, somewhere? That's the right way for this kind of pain. So for every kind of pain you have, we also have already solutions. Not, not we personally, because uh, uh, we are also not trying to reinvent the wheel. There are solutions out there. You just have to bring them in the right context. So Second pain, IP and DNS management. Who is dealing with Excel sheets while sending out or giving IP addresses to servers? Okay, so I'm not not talking. I'm not saying it's wrong, but it's like we are doing things for a long time. So there are different ways. There are uh, like tools which are dealing with that automatically, and you you will have the capability. To, to, to assign networks to special contexts, meaning departments. Hmm? Monitoring, alerting. Who's, I, I ask already, uh, you, all, you all love writing Nagios checks, right? Nagios checks? It's great, huh? But why? They are always the same. It's always the same configuration, the same check. It's, it's kind of easy to automate if there were good tools for it. <clears throat> we have searched, like, uh, there is now a Chinga fork of nuggets, which, which is pretty promising. Uh, on the other hand, writing a nuggets configuration is not a magic thing, which can be automated in a quite easy way. It should be automated. 
because if you're going to if you go in the direction of public or private cloud, you don't want to put your server manually in Nuggets anymore. There won't be a time for it. Yeah, ask for documentation. <laughs> Imagine uh, if if Google, if Amazon with uh, EC2 would need to manually document their cloud virtual machines. <laughs> okay, we can skip this. We can skip the rest of the discussion I get about documentation. There must be a way for you to automate your documentation. There is no way to handle documentation uh, manually when you go for automated provisioning and automatic deployment. So it's also many people don't like to document, so it's a, it's kind of a boring work. So the best things to automate. <coughs> so <coughs> take the jump. Take the jump. Don't worry. <coughs> there are solutions for it. Uh, you just need the most the most work. What you will have is to convince the people in right and next, uh, right and left to you uh, with the idea of automation. <coughs> there is a way out, of course. <coughs> this is what I just said. Tear down the barriers. It's effectively uh, harder if there are political barriers. But social barriers can also be very hard. Use open source, avoid black boxes. Nobody wants to, to manage a black box because this is not possible. Uh, there are several ways, like uh, what I said. Take over the responsibility for provisioning to the users themselves. Give, give them the responsibility. They are not stupid. Um, automate all the things. So for automating, we have to deal with our... When you look at all this, what I just told you, when, when we now talk about automation, we have to deal not only with creating a virtual machine. It's, it's easy. You write a small script, it creates automatically a virtual machine. But that does not already take it into monitoring, already gives it the IP address, already takes it into DHCPD, already takes it into DNS, already takes it into application deployment. No, it's just a virtual machine you have automated. Mm, it's a part, but it's not very much. So. To automate all those things, you need a really framework which sits on top of your data center and knows all the parts about it. And that's where we come in place with OpenQM. I will uh, start a demo now with where I show you how we automatic monitor services, systems and services, how we provide automatically high availability, uh, how we automatically configure systems uh, with, for example, Puppet or pre-configured with Cobbler or Fi. Uh, we have an automated DNS and IP management built in, which is also supported by the OpenKM cloud. And um, configuration management, I told you. And one thing is also uh, quite important, uh, the billing. Somebody has to pay the service and services you are actually providing from the IT. So it would be a good idea if you, if we automate things to directly look into how we get the billing done, because uh, in, a, in a company, you actually would like to to uh, charge departments according to what they use. So if a department does not use IT services at all, why they should be charged? So on the other hand, uh, a department which is using heavily, uh, which is heavily depend on IT services and using like a cloud infrastructure, uh, they should be charged in the way they are using this infrastructure. Okay, so. I'm starting the demo now. Uh, going back here, uh, I will put on the microphone now on the table because I need to click a bit around to show you some things. But I will explain what I'm doing. Of the OpenKM Enterprise Edition, and I'm sorry, <laughs> not the micro. And um, the first thing I would like to uh, notify about OpenKM, it actually has two sides. So if you if you're looking at pure cloud projects, they are 
most of the time just dealing with the user side. So a user can somehow request systems and they get feedback from it. So with OpenQRM, we're actually looking at the administrator side, at your workplace. So we have a tool, which is a complete management console for your data center, uh, including uh, an interface with common open source projects or common commercial projects also, uh, which you may already use in your data center. So the first thing, uh, I would like to show it to you is the, the administrative side. Um, this is where you basically uh, can create services in a generic and uh, an easy way. I have to make it a bit bigger here so we can... Uh, this is the server overview. Um, we have like th uh, three server objects already configured in the system and I simply can add a new server here. And this workflow is Exactly the same if you are provisioning a KVM virtual machine, a Citrix virtual machine, a LXC virtual machine, an OpenVZ virtual machine, a Xen virtual machine, uh, or if you are provisioning even physical service. So this workflow is not limited to virtual machines only. It can do all types of virtual machines and it can also do the same thing which with physical service. So you mean you can deploy your, your backend infrastructure of a cloud with that. So, <clears throat> I, we give a random name here. We can also give a comment, but not needed. So, we would like to have a new resource for this server. And we can choose, like here are different virtualization plugins enabled, and we can choose from different types of virtual machines we would like to create. Uh, this one. And we can select, now I'm selecting uh, the host I would like to create. So, so the whole system is a distributed system which speaks to your virtualization host and to your storage. <clears throat> so if you would have more virtualization hosts, you would have a much longer list here and you would choose on which server you would like to create the virtual machine. So on this server there's no virtual machine running so we can add a virtual machine. I love those generate name buttons because they make my life easier. And it's a built-in naming concept uh, where uh, it will automatically suggest you the right names for your objects. So basically you can, uh, you can uh, like with any other virtualization manager, you can uh, configure like uh, many th certain things on this virtual machine, like the bridge connections, uh, the type of disk and uh, network cards and so on. Uh, we would simply go with the default. We can boot from a, a, um, a CD-ROM or an ISO image uh, if you if you if you like, and we can uh, for the virtual machines we can give a, a VNC password. Just a moment. Okay. So, I'm I'm showing as I said I'm showing you now the administrator side. You will. Ask me after that, of course, uh, how, how this is automated. You just click the whole workflow. So, okay, so. The thing is, behind all this uh, this generic server creation workflow, uh, there's a model which allows to create any type of system, either virtual or physical, by puzzling uh, pieces together, like a virtual, uh, uh, an operating system image, uh, a, a physical server or a virtual machine, a kernel, applications, service level agreements, high availability, and so on. And uh, this model allows then also to like let end user assemble their systems by their own. You will get this after the the, the uh, administrating uh, demo. So now we have a new resource here which you can use for our uh, server. We are still in the workflow 
of the server creation. And we can choose uh, from different uh, images. We have pre-created, for example, uh, let's use Debian. <coughs> and uh, we can adjust things on this uh, on the operating system image directly from this workflow. So, I mean, we can set the the uh, the operating system password. We can we could attach an automatic installation uh, to this operating system image, so it will just boot up the first. Uh, boot into an installation and then uh, boot up from local. Uh, we assume that this is pre-created here, so I, just, I simply go on. <coughs> Which brings me to the final step of this workflow. And there you can uh, set basically the rest of the configuration uh, for the system. So we would like to have this system high available. How much how much effort is it for you to keep a service or a virtual machine high available? Is it always a custom thing which you need to install? Uh, it's, it's hard to answer this whole question, of course. What we have built, we have built in a high availability in OpenQRM in this model. So you never have to ca take care about high availability at all. But, um, oh wait, this is the wrong thing. But you can simply, uh, in OpenQRM, you can uh, simply select the server which we just created, and uh, tell OpenQM this should be high available by enabling a checkbox. So for example, this is the system we just created. Uh, and to activate high availability for this system, independent if it's physical, virtual, machine of any type, this is what we need to do. It's one click. And we, no, we now don't have to care about uh, this system needs to be up anytime, but it will be up anytime because OpenQM knows how this system should work for you. Huh? Okay, there, there are more things. I spoke about um, uh, monitoring, Argos monitoring, for example. Let's first start the server. <coughs> so, uh, just a moment. So the, the whole object we just configured is now ready. And uh, it now has an on and off switch, where when you switch it on, everything will happen automatically. It will be automatically get an IP address from a pool. It will be automatically inserted in DNS. It will be automatically provisioned with uh, the uh, Debian image and a KVM virtual machine, and so on. So we basically combine all those little puzzle pieces to a server object, which then has just one switch on and off. And this is the same later we do for the self-service. We let the user combine their servers and let them switch on and off. And the rest will be done by the framework completely automatically. So, <clears throat> let's see. So, it was just one workflow to create a server. As I said, it will be always the same for any type of virtual machine or physical machine. We had one additional click to make it high available. Yeah. And uh, now I will deal, I want to deal with uh, some of the pains I just uh, noticed, uh, notified. Uh, for example, the application deployment. So, um, let's. Use Puppet. <coughs> so these are our servers which are available in OpenQRM. And we can simply now deploy applications by assigning Puppet recipes. So this should be a web server. Yes, thanks. <laughs> this is all. And the thing will be coming up as web server automatically. Uh, so because normally people have uh, uh, lots of different ideas how this system should be provisioned. Would it be a Debian system, a CentOS system? Would it be KVM? Would it be VMware? You are absolutely right and I'm completely with you, okay? Just give me five more or ten more minutes and I will come to the point where you have 
this single click deployment for a complete web server, okay? Great. Okay, so we have uh, assigned a web server application. That's all we need to do. As I said, I'm still in the manual uh, administration part, so this the OpenQM framework cannot only automate things, but it can also help you to manage your whole uh, uh, different technologies in the data center. So let me just give you one more example uh, of the back end, and then we'll switch to the cloud front end. So let's go for monitoring. So we just have said this should be a web server. <clears throat> just a moment. Here's our Nagios. Uh, and we, of course, can also auto-configure it. Yeah, but I would like to show you the manual way. Just to <laughs> just so. so here this we select our server. Uh, we haven't any services yet. Just a moment. Just a moment. So you you can add services as you like, uh, which you would like to ch which you would like to monitor with Nagios, and from those list of services you prepared, you can then uh, easily, for example, assign uh, the HTTP service check to this system, and within a short time, we now have here our uh, server we just created uh, at. Um, configured with an HTTP check which is currently pending. So the whole uh, the whole subsystems we have just talked about, they are all implemented in OpenQRM with different technologies, so you don't have to use Nagios, you can also use Ichinga, you can also use Zabbix. Yeah? You have always options of tools which you can use and uh, which you prefer to use. So we won't, we won't uh, tell you you have to use this and that tool, but we will give you options in the subsystem to use different tools. For example, for virtualization, we provide like six or seven different technologies there. Okay, so um, things I would like I would like to switch now to the uh, to the automated pad, the the automated uh, part of OpenQM, the cloud front end, and um, there you can see how uh, this model maps uh, to the end user view. So. To do this, I first show you the pure cloud front end. Uh, this is the back end configuration, and as a user, you can now log into the cloud portal. There will be a password normally, but I'm logged in already, so don't worry about that. Uh, so this is the, the, the view for your end user of your IT services. And uh, as an end user, I simply can now um, select from what you have created as the shopping basket for them. That means you have the capability on the administrator side to go to products, for example, and you can manage network products, which is in this case, in this simple example, it's one NIC, two NIC, three NICs, four NICs. So all these products are uh, combined with uh, like a virtual currency, so if somebody orders a system with four network cards, it will pay, he will automatically pay for those four network cards as he orders, okay? So in the same way, you can uh, add virtualization types to your cloud. Uh, yeah, come on. You can add different virtualization types. You can add uh, applications to your cloud. Basically, your puppet, your puppet recipe suddenly becomes a cloud product where you can charge from where you can charge the user for your puppet recipe. So those values are what you see as the, as the user in the back end. So as the end user, I want always a big system. I like uh, Ubuntu. Uh, it should be a web server. And a database should be on it. I can also configure IPs. So uh, we have the capability to map, to let you create networks. That means certain blocks of IP addresses you, you, you want to configure and map those IP addresses to certain user groups in the cloud. That means 
your neighbor watching at the same interface will may have a different network available there where you can self-pick its IP addresses he would like to assign. Yeah. Well, let's give this the four and the rest will be automatic. We can go also into details exactly what's, what's, what's going to be provisioned uh, uh, right now. And as one of the only f cloud frameworks, uh, we provide the button for high availability. High availability. Because we have built in high availability in our model, so the cloud does not need to do something extra for it. For us, it's a checkbox. So you can see if I'm doing the, uh, if I'm not doing high availability, uh, the price in the virtual currency will be a bit, a bit lower, but we can also set it to high availability. Okay. So in, I could simply s press submit now and like in, in, in two minutes I would have the system up and running. It would write me a mail. I will show you then. Uh, you, you, I don't know your name, but you wanted to see the one click deployment with, I, I want a web server. I want, I want a web server now. Okay. So let's save this request as we have made now as end user. Let's save this as web server. And let's remove the database, so it's actually just a web server. <laughs> but you decide. It's your uh, it, the system is so flexible that always you decide. So if we submit this, uh, uh, OpenQM Cloud will not automatically create it directly, but this is just the profile now. So you can have uh, the, the overview about the profiles here. This is the profile we just created. Um, we have also uh, a nice visual way uh, to construct your uh, your cloud virtual machines. For example, uh, it should be uh, uh, it should be a, a virtual machine like that. It should be a CentOS and so on. This is basically the same what I just did with the with the form before, but in a nice drag and drop way. So for for users who would like to save time. Okay. So additional to that visual way to construct one single system. We have a visual infrastructure designer where you can uh, construct a whole infrastructure with. We've just re uh, released a, a small video with uh, uh, like deploying a complex infrastructure with OpenQM Cloud, which is basically, here's your web server. Hello? Yeah, this is your web server. And this has ordered it. This is deployment. This is creating a new server. What I just did, well, just dragging the template into this uh, area, into the data center, virtual data center. Area. This is deployment. The system is actually going to start on my system right now. So as soon as this stops rolling, we have a system, we have created a web server. So you want to do this five times? <laughs> I won't do it on a notebook here because it will be overloaded. So uh, assume that's a simple mouse drag. Okay, one click deployment. So let's uh, quickly wait until the system is up and running. Of course, you can see uh, now in the back end there are several things happening right now. For example, for example, uh, the system now will be have a DNS entry automatically. Nobody did it. The system did it. It will also have a DHCPD entry. It uh, may have uh, collect the statistics configured already. Uh, it may have applications. Uh, it has applications configured uh, because the cloud does is doing the same way as uh, um, as uh, what you are doing manually in the administrator backend. Yeah. So. About documentation, yes, the system is automatically inserted in our documentation already. I can show you this. Uh, what, what, how many time I have? Ten minutes? Great. So let's see. We have uh, 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 integration with iDoit, which is a, a great uh, IT documentation system. So let's see. Come on. 
So you see here, this is the system we just requested. And it's documented. Yeah! Nobody did it manually. It's fully automatically documented already. So, let's see in the back end. For the end user, he now has a system. It's like, he requested like, uh, I requested like three minutes ago. So it's ultra fast because we're using, if possible, we're using storage with a snapshot technology. So it will be ultra fast cloning of uh, pre-made templates. But you can also run the same way you can uh, provision a physical server with a Windows auto installation with Opsi, for example, in the same way as we just did with this, uh, with this uh, KVM virtual machine. So in here you have uh, different options. You have a login uh, possibility. You also can set high availability here. You can pause your appliances and so on. That means as the end user, you have all capabilities what you need to automate or to do your work without need to ask the IT administrator. So on top of that, uh, I'm, I'm uh, fly a bit. Um, we'll ha have a bit time for questions later on. Additionally, on top of that, we built cloud zones, which is uh, the the layer on top of OpenQRM Cloud. So this is um, no, just a moment. This was the wrong thing. Just a moment. So Cloud Zones is capable to deal with multiple OpenQRM clouds, as, as many as you like. So for example, you are, you are able with OpenQRM Open Enterprise Cloud Zones to uh, make different zones in different multiple, in different uh, data center locations, in different physical locations. So you can combine all your data center around the world in one UI for the end user, where the end user can simply now uh, jump from one cloud to another. Let's let's um, just showing you a nice integration with um, Google Maps here. So just a moment. So, for example, I'm now uh, in the administrator zone. And there should be a Google Maps coming up here now. Now we have, um, I'm thinking I have, I don't have a real network connection here, but normally you have a Google Map here where, where uh, it shows you exactly where the address is, where the data is located. You can see if we are uh, switching now uh, the zone to another uh, uh, location, uh, this will be in San Francisco, for example, potentially. Yeah. And with the UI, with this UI, you can have a single front end for multiple open QRM clouds in all over the world, basically. And the system uh, requests basically is the same as you see in the cloud portal I just showed you, but uh, this is working like with multiple clouds. So you see the the front end uh, of the portal is uh, kind of similar to the cloud portal. Okay. So this was the demonstration so far. Uh, I'm pretty much done with the presentation. You see, uh, it stopped rolling the icon, uh, and it's now an active request which you can use. So guess how simple deprovisioning is? This is how the server is being put out the monitoring, put out the DNS server, put out the DHCP server, Everything is being freed up again just by putting the system into the wastebasket. Okay. So I'm almost done. Uh, I would uh, appreciate your questions now if you like. Um, I can just um, say the whole OpenQM is a fully GPL2 project. Try it yourself. It's fully free to download. Uh, there is an enterprise version available with uh, additional features which you may want to like have if you uh, run a, a big production environment. Um, those are the additional enterprise features. Quickly going over that. Uh, the, the, the main thing uh, which, the, the main part, uh, the, the most important feature of this is the cloud zones which I just showed. 
And uh, this is role administration, a few screenshots. This is the cloud zones integration with uh, Google Maps, I, which sadly didn't work here so well. And it's time for your questions now. Yes? You just said you can handle uh, not only virtual machines, uh, also physical machines. Who is switching the machines on and off? Yeah, it's a good, it's a good question. Uh, virtual machines you can simply create by uh, creating a configuration file or so on. How, who is switching on the virtual, uh, the physical machines if you want to provision it? IPMI, Wake Up Online, KVM. Uh, we have uh, uh, plugins for out of band management where you can set the KVM interface or the IPMI interface inside the configuration. And OpenCAM will automatically switch on the host if it's needed. The good thing is, if you run a private cloud, you normally have several virtualization hosts up and running for the virtual machines. With OpenCAM, you can run a private cloud with every virtualization host turned off, saving power, climate, in your data center stuff. When the first request comes in, OpenCAM will power on the first host automatically. And it will also switch off hosts, if you like, which are not in use currently. Because in a private cloud, if you have a system which is not running any virtual machine, does it make sense? It can be turned off. Saves your power bill. OK? More questions? Yes? The question was, do you have command line interface? Also, also a good question. Yes, uh, actually, all the the different technologies and, and parts of OpenQM are implemented uh, via command line script. Uh, so you can always run the same actions as you did by via the web UI via the command line interface. Uh, the whole UI is uh, thanks uh, that guy over there, Alexander Kobala, who is responsible for the web or for the most for the main parts of the web interface, is. Uh, that it provides an automatic API, so a REST API, where you can uh, talk to with, with with several different tools. And um, the cloud itself, it also has a SOAP API, which you can, it's not command line, but it's an API where you can interface with it. Generally, all the steps you can also do are from command line, yes. Anything more? Yeah. Right. So, if I were to, were to install Postgres on a server, does the documentation get updated automatically, or do you do you need to do it through OpenQRM? Um, yeah, I'm repeating the question. You uh, you ask if you install Postgres on some servers. Uh, yeah, we are not doing like a package manager list and uh, documenta documenting this. Uh, actually, yes. It will be automatically in there because uh, the integration with the I do it, it will insert all the static data which is known by OpenQM about this system into I do it, and it will do an application discovery, which then recognizes oh this Postgres their port is open. So yes, it will. Yeah. But generally, of course, it, OpenQM can only put into documentation what itself knows about the, about the, about the system. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much for your attention. Thanks for being here, and I hope you enjoy Tidoza, the rest of Tidoza, this great event. Thank you. <laughs>